All right, guys. So welcome to the uh, Forex workshop. And in this two-day workshop, what we'll be talking about is the foundations of Forex trading. So we are going to be starting from the very basics of what Forex is, and then we'll be dwelling on the fundamentals in this particular two-day bootcamp. So today and tomorrow, we'll be covering a variety of topics that will ground us in the basics of Forex trading, right? This webinar is powered by 10Trade. 10 10Trade 10 is a multi-asset broker bringing this to you. So uh, my name is Toby Okunuga. I'll be your presenter. I'll be the anchor for this two-day bootcamp. So welcome on board, guys. Let's get into um, today's session real quick. Also, I like it to be as interactive as, as possible. So as I'm talking, and then if you have any questions, please feel free to um, ask your questions in the chat box, and then I'll provide answers. Okay. So let's start from what Forex is. What is the definition of Forex? And the first thing you must know about when you hear Forex trading is that Forex trading is an abbreviation of foreign exchange, right? Forex is foreign exchange. And then the foreign, the foreign exchange market is the largest financial market in the world. And it is averaging $6 trillion on a daily basis. What that means is that the transaction that goes on in the foreign exchange market on a daily basis averages $6 trillion. That means there are days that it's, it's more than $6 trillion there are days that it is less than six trillion dollars, but the buying and selling that occurs in the forex market every day six trillion dollars on the average, and then the forex market is open twenty four hours a day, five days a week. So from Monday through Friday is when the forex market is open. So you cannot trade in the forex market during weekends, right? And then there is no physical location um, for the forex market. You know, somebody might be asking, since it's a market, is there like an office where we can go and trade forex? No, there's no office. There's no physical location for the forex market. Everything is done online. Okay, it's done through something we we'll call electronic communication networks in various markets across the globe. All right. So now. How do we make money in the foreign exchange markets? We make money basically through volatility, right? Now, we, we said Forex is a short form of foreign exchange and foreign exchange is basically exchanging currency, money from one currency to another. And then for foreign exchange, exchange rates fluctuate. There is volatility in exchange rates. Just like the rates of the Naira to the dollar last week is not the same as the rate today. So that fluctuations, that volatility is what we capitalize on, right? Now, that will bring me to talk about this particular concept called contract for difference. Now, let's read it. Now, this type of financial instrument allows you to benefit from fluctuations in the price of stocks, commodities, indices, and more without really purchasing them. So you don't own the assets that you trade. So to explain this uh, properly, right? A normal person that is into exchange. So let's say your blue the change, right? For that person to carry out foreign exchange transaction, they need to actually have physical currency, okay, to transact. But we are pretty much also doing something similar to a blue de change, just that we are not doing it online. We don't need to purchase, we don't need to have physical currencies in order to transact. Now, we are able to do it online because of this platform, this contract for different. That is why we are able to make money online without purchasing the currency physically. And then we can also make money 
we can also make money. Mr. Ambrose is saying I should increase my volume. Um, I think I'm, my volume is fine. Maybe you have to increase the volume on your computer or your phone, okay? Let me know if my volume, my, my sound is low, guys. Give me some feedback. Uh, Mr. Dixon, Mr. Godwin, let me know if you can hear me loud and clear. Good, so the volume is okay. Mr. Ambrose, so please kindly check the volume on your end and then you can hear us clearly if you do that, all right? So what are talking about? I was talking, I was saying that either because of contract for difference, remember we said there's volatility in exchange rates and then we make money based on the volatility. And by volatility, it means that either price is going up or price is going down. So with contracts for difference, regardless um, or for the, uh, the direction of price, either price is going down or is going up, you can profit in both markets, right? If price is you know, going up, if the exchange rate is increasing, you can make money. If exchange rate is decreasing, you can also make money. So you can make money both ways, right? Unlike, unlike um, the normal booty chain person, the, the typical exchange person, they don't really make money, right? When when price, when rate is going down, right? They they make profits when there is increase in exchange rate. So we have a world of um, advantage over like in this exchange business. So everything is made possible because of what we call contract for different, all right? So let's go further into this. So let's do a little bit of comparison um, amongst the different financial markets. Now, we are aware of the Forex market. There's also something called the stock market. So the stock market, okay, so let's start. In the Forex market, currency is traded, while in the stock market, company stocks is traded. Now, what we trade in the Forex market are currencies, currencies of different countries, like, like Naira, like the dollar, like the pound sterling. While in the stock markets, what is being traded are company stocks, okay? That is like Apple, like Facebook, like Tesla, right like um which other platforms do we have like google all right so that's the difference between the forex market and the stock market and then you can also even trade um company stocks as well even on the foreign exchange in the forex market leveraging on what we call cfds right so i'll show you how even if um the forex market is different from the stock market. Leveraging on you know, particular brokers, a broker like Tentrate, you can actually buy stocks, right? Even on the foreign exchange platform, okay? So you can buy stocks of Facebook, buy stocks of Tesla, Apple, and the likes. Now, let's go back to the comparison. When we compare the stock market to the foreign exchange market, the largest stock market in the world is the New York Stock Exchange, right? It's located in the United States. And then you have Tokyo Stock Exchange, you have London Stock Exchange. You know, every country literally has, you know, a stock exchange, right? Now, when you compare the foreign exchange market and then you compare it to the largest stock exchange in the world, which is the New York Stock Exchange, the first market is averaging six trillion dollars every day meanwhile the largest stock exchange is averaging just 22 billion dollars on a daily basis now what that means is it's like you know comparing a giant to a dwarf right if you combine all of the you know stock exchanges that we have in the world it will still not be up to the transaction that is going on on the forex market on a daily basis right so and it does not necessarily mean that the stock market is not profitable, right? You can actually also make money in the stock market. You can make a lot of money in the stock market as well. But based on what we have here, 
you know, you stand a chance. I think there's there will automatically be better opportunities in the forex market. Okay, better potentials to make money and to invest in the forex markets. All right. So let's go to the market participants. We talked about the six trillion dollars average volume in the market on a daily basis. Then you must ask yourself. How is this $6 trillion coming to play? Who are the people investing this kind of money in the market, right? So that's the concept of the market participants, the market players, right? Who are the categories of people that are investing in the Forex market, right? So we have hedge funds. Hedge funds are financial institutions that you know, manage investment of high net worth individuals. An average hedge fund is managing portfolio in realms of billions of dollars. And then we have hundreds, even thousands of hedge funds around the world, okay, that are actively trading in the financial markets. A hedge fund is also trading in the financial markets, in the first market to make money for their investors. Central banks as well, every country has a central bank or should have a central bank. I think you have commercial banks, okay, like uh, Wells Fargo, like uh, Chase Bank, Bank of America, and banks like that. You have forex brokers, forex brokers like Ten Trade, right? That makes it possible for you and I to trade in the foreign exchange market. You have companies. There are small companies as well, like private equity firms that also handle um, investor capital that are also actively trading in the foreign exchange market. And then at the bottom of that food chain is individuals, retail traders like you and I, that also wants to multiply our capital in the foreign exchange market, right? So these are the market participants, right? And every market participant is trading in the foreign exchange market to make money. Right, so you as a trader now, the reason why you are learning how to trade in the forex market is so that you can make profit. And if you make profit, that means the profit that you make, right, is based on the loss that someone else in this food chain will make, right? So that's why trading in the forex market profitably requires a great deal of skill sets because the hedge funds are also here to make money. Where would they, how would they make profit? Okay, they'll make profit from anybody in this uh, market participant category. And an average hedge fund, an average central bank or, or commercial banks, they have teams of experts, analysts, okay? They have software programs that will help them make good trading decisions. So as individuals, you are up against, you know, highly intelligent people, right? So that is why you need to treat the Forex markets as a serious business. Only people that take this seriously, that see it as a business, are gonna reap the rewards. So it needs you need a great deal of commitment, okay, time, right, to to learn mentorship information and of course money to be able to come out successful in the foreign exchange market, right? And it's amazing what we have um, with Ten Trade at Ten Trade. We are committed to um, training you, empowering you, giving you all the tools, information you need to be equipped to come out successful and making money profitably in the foreign exchange market. All right, so let's move forward because of time. So who are, who are foreign brokers? Foreign brokers are financial institutions as well that makes it possible for you and I to trade money, to trade in the foreign exchange market. You as an individual trader cannot trade directly in the financial market. All right, so the broker serves as a middleman, okay, that, so when you want to place a trade in the Forex market, the broker takes your trade and place your trade for you, okay? So when you also make a profit, 
the broker handles everything. So the broker has sophisticated systems, okay, in place to ensure that trading in the financial market is possible for you. Back in the days, um, before you can even trade in the financial market, I think at the time, only high net worth individuals could trade. You would need minimum of $100,000 to trade in the markets. But now that's been decentralized in such a way that you and I with little capital, like $1,000 or less can trade and brokers make that possible. All right, so 10 trade, is a broker, okay, that can help you trade profitably in the foreign exchange market. We don't only help you trade in the market, we also give you the right skill set to be profitable in the foreign exchange market. So uh, today and tomorrow, we'll talk a lot about 10 trade, how you can access 10 trade services and start trading in the foreign exchange market, okay? So 10 trade is our, is our recommended broker. So if you don't have an account with 10 trade, you want to go to this link and then create an account because tomorrow will be our practical class tomorrow. So for every beginner that is here tonight, tomorrow we'll start um, practical tomorrow. So tomorrow you would learn how to open and close a trade tomorrow. Tomorrow you'll be exposed to the MetaTrader platform and how everything is you know, um, working. So tomorrow is practicals, fully practicals. So what we are gonna be doing today is just to talk about the theoretical aspects of the financial market, all right? So, I, so you wanna go to this link and then create an account, all right? Go to this link and then create an account. Mr. Elijah David, my volume is okay. All right, so kindly increase the volume on your end as well. All right, you'll be fine. All right, so let's move on, guys. So 10 Trade, okay, is a broker that offers you amazing services. Um, and then as soon as you create an account with 10 Trade, an account officer is automatically assigned to you. So you should naturally receive, the, receive a call within 24 hours to 48 hours to, um, and then your officer will walk you through all the aspects of our services and how to take full advantage of what we have for you, okay? So let's move on, guys. So what do we trade in the Forex market? The first market is a currency market. So what we trade is currencies. And we have, as of today, there are over 190 countries in the world. And then I think we have over 100 currencies in the world. So you can actually trade most currencies on the foreign exchange market, as long as those you know, countries are having international trade deals, right? But as a beginner, or even professional traders, I, we always recommend that you want to stick to trading the major currencies because those major currencies in themselves is enough for you for the, for the entirety of your professional trading career. All right, so we'll just deal with the eight major currencies in this bootcamp. So what are the eight major currencies that we have? It's on the screen. You have the Euro, you have the... GBP is a Great Britain pound. You have the AUD. AUD is the Australian dollar. You have NZD. NZD is the New Zealand dollar. USD is the United States dollar. CAD is the Canadian dollar. CHF is the Swiss franc. And JPY. JPY is the Japanese yen. So these are the eight major currencies that we have, right? And then we are gonna be trading these eight major currencies, okay? So let's talk about currency pairs. Remember that this is Forex, foreign exchange. So when we talk about exchange, that means exchange has to do with two things. We are exchanging money from one currency to another. So what it means that these eight major currencies, we cannot trade them in isolation. For example, you cannot take 
you cannot take uh, just JPY now and trade just JPY. No, we, we have to trade JPY in exchange with another currency, all right? So we trade currency pairs. We trade the finance with the, the Forex markets in pairs. Currency pairs is what we trade. That's how we make money, all right? So this is an example of a currency pair. We have Euro USD right here. Okay, so what is the anatomy of the currency pair? You have the base currency here. Usually the first currency in a currency pair is called the base currency. And then the second currency in a currency pair is called the quote currency. And at any given time, every currency pair has the, their own exchange rates in real time, right? So I'll show you um, all of that shortly. So right now, Euro USD is 1.1302, okay? So this is a random exchange rate right here, okay? So, and what this means is that one Euro is worth $1.1302, okay? So what you should note basically in this slide is that what we trade is currency pairs, right? And in a currency pair, we have the base currency. The base currency is the first currency, and then the quote currency is the second currency. So it's just like going to, let's say you are traveling, you are traveling to the US and you are in MMA, okay, Lagos Airport. So you have Naira. You cannot go to the US and go and spend Naira right? You need the dollar. So you get to the airport, you give, you, you, um, you, you get to an exchange at the airport. So you give your Naira to the exchange rep, right? So your, your Naira is the base currency. That is money that is with you. That's your base currency. And then the quote currency is money that you want to exchange to. All right, so at the point of exchange, they'll give you all of that quote, all right? That'll determine how much that you are gonna pay. So, so that's what this you know, means literally, okay? So we have different um, currency pairs that you can trade. So let me, let me go to um, a white screen here and then just dwell on this a bit and then explain currency pairs. Right, so we have we have eight major currencies. We have the euro. We have the euro, right? You have the USD. You have the card. You have the GBP. You have the AUD, NZD, CHF, and JPY. These are the major currencies that we have. Now, when it comes to currency pairs, it means that we are pairing each of this currency against another. So let's pair the Euro with every other currency right here. So if you pair just the Euro, if you pair just Euro, you will have Euro against the USD is USD. Euro against CAD is Euro CAD. Euro against GBP is Euro GBP. Euro against AUD is Euro AUD. Euro and NZD is Euro NZD. Euro and CHF is Euro CHF. Euro JPY is Euro JPY. So when you pair each of this currency against another, we should arrive at, I think, 28 currency pairs, all right? So when you pair them against another, do the combination, one currency against another, you'd arrive at 28 currency pairs. And this 28 currency pairs is more than enough for you to trade for your whole trading career, all right? Personally, you might not even trade up to 10 pairs, right? to be very, very profitable. There are some people that are only trading one pair. One pair, one or two pairs is enough 
for you to trade. All right. So, but as you as you grow in your knowledge and skill sets, you naturally um, find affinity for a particular currency pair, and then you can choose to just trade that currency pair or trade two or three or five, depending on uh, your skill set level and your knowledge level. All right. So I just have to show us that. But as we start um, doing analysis, you get familiar with all of these currency pairs that you can trade and how to trade these currency pairs. Okay, so let us go back to, to the slide here. Okay, so what do we do in the foreign exchange markets? We buy and sell. Remember, we are forex traders now. Right, just like you have traders in in the market. So, if you go to the market very close to your apartment, you know they sell banana, orange, tomato, pepper, and things like that. Okay, the people there that are selling, buying and selling, they they are traders. We are also traders. We are forex traders. Just that our our commodity, what we trade, is our currencies. We trade currencies. So we are buying and selling. That is what we do. Okay, so we buy and sell currency pairs, and then we do this online. We do this online. All right. So looking at this chart right here, let's just explain something. Now, because we buy and sell, there are two major you know, directions that the Forex markets makes. Okay, it is, it is either price is going up or price is going down. Okay, the market is binary. So is that price is going up or price is going down? By price, I mean exchange rate of you know, currency pairs. So you would always find that price is in a bull market. When price is going up, you say that price is in a bull market. When price is going down, you see that price is in a bear market, all right? So we are constantly in a bull or bear market, okay? So these are terms that you would be hearing a lot in this forex space, bull market, bear market, bulls and bears, all right? So let me just explain why, you know, we call it bull and then why we call it bear. You know, when you, when, you take a, when you take a look at a bull, okay, so how does a bull attack? Okay, if um, you have seen a bull fight before, you, you, you know that when a bull attacks, a bull attacks with, with the horns, right? It attacks from ground up, from ground up, all right? From ground up, so, oops. Let's go back to this. It's attached from ground up. So that's why we call it a bull market because price is going up. And then we call it a bear market because how does a bear attack? Okay, a bear attacks from up down. Okay, a bear, when it wants to attack its prey, you know, it stands up with on its two legs and then attacks all the way down. So that is just the representation that, you know, we are trying to use here. So bulls and bear, bull market, represents when there is strength in a particular currency. Bear market means that there is weakness in a particular currency. So that currency is losing value. That's when it's a bear market. When it's in a bull market, that currency is gaining value, it's gaining strength, right? And because of CFDs, remember that you can make money either in a bull market or in a bear market. Either price is going up in a bull market, you can capitalize on that bull market and make money. Okay, so that means you buy at a very, very low point, right? In a bull market, you buy at a very low price. So when you buy and then price starts going up, you are making your profit. You can also make money in a bear market. How do you make money in a bear market? When you know that price is going down, you sell at a very, very high price. And then as price is going down, right, you are making your money. So that's the beauty of what we have going on as forex traders. 
we don't care either price in a bull market or bear market. You, you can capitalize on both markets and then make money, all right? Good. So let's go to the next concept. And that will start shedding a bit more light on what we're talking about, okay? So let's talk about the concept of a PIP. So we are gradually approaching practicals now. Okay, so let's talk about what a PIP is. When you hear a PIP, a PIP is a unit of measurement used to show changes in the rate of a pair. It tells us how far price has moved within a particular period of time, right? Remember that I said that in the market, we trade the volatility of currency pairs. So that means exchange rate is not static, it is dynamic, okay? It moves from one price to another price. So when we see those movements, that volatility in exchange rate in price, how do we calculate that move? How do we know how far price has moved within a particular period of time, right? We do that calculation in PIPs. So PIPs is the metric that we use to calculate. Just as we measure distance, the smallest unit of distance is in meters, right? So if you are going, traveling from your office back home tonight, right? That is distance. How do you measure that, that movement? We, we measure distance in meters. So you have moved from one place to another. If you measure it in meters or kilometers. In this case, when there is a change in exchange rates of a particular currency pair, we measure it in pips. We call it pips, right? Good. So let's do a little example here. So we have two different exchange, uh, two different currency pairs here. We have the Euro USD and then we have the USD JPY. So let's start from this Euro USD. Now, as you can see here, what do we have? We can see that price shifted, price moved from 1.1005 and then we saw an increment to 1.1006, right? So there's an increase from 1.105 to 1.106. So how do you now calculate? How do we calculate this increment, All right? So um, there are two ways that we can calculate this. We can calculate it the manual way, and then we can calculate this with, uh, with a tool that we'll talk about when we go to the trading platform. So on our trading platform, there are tools that can help you calculate pips easily. So you won't have to do a lot of math. So for, for people that don't like math, okay, you won't have to calculate it by math, but it is good as a trader to know how to do all these basic things because what if you don't have the opportunity to use that tool? For example, if you are checking out the trading platform on your mobile phone, that tool to, to calculate pips is not active on, on the mobile platform. It's only active on a web platform, on your laptop or your desktop. Okay, so but it's good to know how to calculate it manually. So I'll show you how to calculate it manually, then show you how to calculate it automatically with that tool that you have access to for free. So what is the easiest way to calculate pips of currency pairs? It's very, very simple. You just want to first and foremost subtract, just subtract. So price moved from this point to this point, from point A. So let's call this point A, right? And then this is point B. The first thing you want to do, just do a normal, subtraction so if you subtract this from this you are going to get what we'll get 0 0.0001 okay simple as abc now when you get this value that is subtracted now 
all you need to do is to now move it now for, for every other pair, for every pair aside from, aside from JPY pairs, you want to move the exchange rate to the fourth decimal place. Okay, for every pair aside from JPY pair, every pair that, that does not have JPY in it, when you do this calculation, you want to move this decimal four places forward. So in this case, this is Euro USD. There's no JPY there. So you move your decimal uh, number, your decimal four places forward. So move it one, two, three, four. So right now we have 1.0. Same for the visit. So that, that's how we're able to arrive at one pip. So you say that when price moves from this point to this point, the, the, the movement is in one pip, okay? Now, it might not really make a lot of sense to you now, but as we start applying it in the foreign exchange market, it will, it will make a lot more sense to you. Just follow along, okay? Now, let's do the same thing for you. As the JPY. So price moved from 104.20 to 104.21. The first thing you want to do is simple, just subtract. When you when you subtract, you get zero point. Okay. You get zero point. Hold on. Zero point zero one, and then what did we say for JPY pairs? When you see any currency pair that has JPY in it, when you do your subtraction, you want to move the decimal number, the the um, decimal two places forward. So this place one two. Hold on, there's something wrong with my. Also, let's do this again. So you move this one, two. So that'll give you 1.0. So that's how you're able to arrive at one pip. Again, when you do your subtraction manually and then you, you, you get the value for every pair, for every currency pair that is not, that doesn't have JPY in it, right you move the decimal place four places forward right and then for jpy pairs you move the decimal two places forward so that is how i learned it easily and i think um, you can easily understand it give me some feedback guys in the chat box if you understand how to calculate tips please type in yes in the chat box if it is easy for you type in yes if it's still not clear please type in no in the chat box. So let me get some feedback from you before we go ahead. All right, guys. So Mr. Godwin said, it's not clear to me yet. I had network issues, all right? Let me get feedback from another person. Okay, Mr. Mr. Dixon, Mr. Elijah David, Olukunle Femi, Onyikemi, Kanayo Konko, Oriala. Give, give me some feedback, guys. Only Mr. Godwin has given me feedback. Let me get feedback from two, one or two more people, and then we'll go ahead. Mr. Godwin. You have network issues. So possibly if I explain again, you might also have issues. So I recommend that you just watch the replay, possibly. All right, so let's move forward because of time. So let us clear this up. Okay, so we've talked about PIPs now. Let's talk about 
the concept of, of spread. So I wouldn't dwell too much on spread. Now, spread is simply the difference between, excuse me, spread is the difference between the ask, the bid and ask price, okay? A spread is different between the bid and ask price. So a bid price is a price that, that the broker would, um, would sell a currency. So if, if um, you want to sell a particular currency pair, the bid price is a price where you'll be quoted into the market. If you want to buy a currency pair, the ask price is a price where you'll be quoted into the market. All right. So the the bid price and ask price will be given to you. So is by default would be on the on the brokerage platform on the first broker platform. Okay. Remember that forex brokers make it easy for you and I to trade in the financial market. All right. So the difference between the bid and ask price, right, is what the forex broker is charging you to place that trade for you in the foreign exchange market. Now they have to charge you because the forex, the broker, they are giving you leverage. Okay, so an average broker can can give you leverage up to 500 or 1000. So if you are trading with a leverage of one to 100, for example, that means for every $1 that you have, for every $1 of your capital, right, the broker is multiplying that by 100 so that you can trade competitively in the foreign exchange market. So the broker is providing a lot of liquidity for you to trade successfully in the market, all right? So to um, do that, they need to quote you in at a bid and ask price. So that difference is a spread. So that spread is some sort of a commission. So this goes to the Forex um, broker, okay? So just so that you know what, um, a spread is in real time. So let's go ahead, guys, to the next concept. So let's talk about lot sizes. So it gets interesting when we start talking about lot sizes. Now, what is a lot? A lot is the number of units of base currency that you can buy or sell at a time. A lot is the number of units number or units of base currency that you can buy or sell at a time. So in order not to confuse us, let us, uh, there's a way that I'll explain to you that will make a lot more sense to you. So when you are thinking about, when you hear lot size, what I want you to have at the back of your mind is think about volume or think about stake, right? So when you are trading with, let's say $100, for example, how much of that $100 do you want to trade with? Okay, lot size is what would determine your stake in the market, right? For every trade that you place, okay? For some people that, are used to possibly sports betting. You know, we just finished playing the, you know, World Cup, for example. There are people that, you know, were betting that France was going to beat Argentina. Some were saying that Argentina was going to beat France. And then they put their money where their mouth is. So there are a lot of, you know, sport betting platforms, okay, where people can place a bet. So looking at France against Argentina, on that sports betting platform, okay, so they'll give you different odds, right? And then they'll ask you, how much do you want to stake? Okay, so how much of your money will you put into this um, bet? And how much you put is what will determine how much you make, right? So that's what I want you to have. So when you're talking about, when, when I'm talking about lot sizes, think about lot size as some sort of a stake. Okay, so how much of your money 
will you be trading with? And that will determine how much profit or loss that you make, right? Now, in this, in this scenario, we have a table here, but just focus on this volume, from this volume and this people, right? I don't wanna to get too technical and start talking about all of these units, right? So focus on volume and the dollar per peep table here. Now we have four major categories of lot sizes. The first one and the lowest one is the nano lot. And then we have the micro lot, we have the mini lot, and then we have the standard lot. But right now, the nano lot is uh, most brokers or the majority of brokers does not offer nano lots, okay, for end users, right? So most brokers will start you on the micro lots, mini lots, and standard lots, okay? So let us dwell only on micro lots, mini lots, and standard lots. So let me bring up my whiteboard and then let us explain this properly. So, so what do we have? We have micro lot. We have mini lot, and then we have standard lot. We have standard lot. So a micro lot is. So when you want to place a trade on your trading platform, you would always be asked the lot size that you want to use, right? So micro lots is usually a number between 0 0.01 to 0 0.09. A mini lot is from 0 0.1 to 0 0.99. A standard lot is one to, uh, I think one to 500 or one to 1,000, right? Something there about. Now, what is the dollar value? What is this representing? This 0 0.01 and the likes, what do they represent? What do, what do they mean? So let us discuss the monetary value. Okay, what is our risk in using any of these values, All right? So the, the easiest way, the easiest way to transform this into monetary value is to simply multiply it by 10. So if you are using a micro lot size of the lowest micro lot is 0 0.01, what does this mean? You have to, so you multiply it by 10. If you multiply by 10, that will give you what? 0 0.10. So this means that this is, right? 10 cents per pip. So if you use a micro lot of 0 0.01, what it means is that every pip is now worth $10 to you. Okay, so that's the value of every pip to you. So what it means is that if you place a trade and then you are possibly 20 pips in profit and then you use 0 0.01, what it means is that that would be 0 0.10 times 20. So your profit is going to be what? That would be $2 in profit. On the flip side, if you also make a loss, that would be $2 in loss, all right? So a micro lot is anywhere from 0 0.01 to 0 0.09. So tomorrow also we will, we will talk briefly about risk management because it is your trading capital that will determine the lot size that you should use. That is if you are being risk conscious, right? You don't want to lose all of your capital on one trade, all right? So let's do another example. So if you are trading 
if you are trading um, with a with a mini lot, so a mini lot is a second category here. So, and anywhere from zero point one to zero point nine nine. So, a mini lot. Let's say you are trading with zero point five. What this means is that zero point five times ten. So the value of that lot size is five dollars. So every pip is worth five dollars for you. So if you enter a trade and then you are 20 pips in profit, what that means is 20 times the value per pip. So that's 20 times five. So this trade, you make an easy $100 in profit. On the flip side, if you made a wrong decision and then price started going against you, 20 pips against you, this will be how much that you are going to lose, all right? If you are trading with a standard lot of, let's say, it's, it's of, uh, let's say 2.0 standard. So for a standard lot is a number between one and let's say 500 to 1,000. So let's say you are using 2.0 standard lots. It means that, so we multiply this by 10, the value of that lot size is as $20 per pip. So every pip is worth $20 to you. So if a trade goes your direction, you are 20 pips in profit. Okay, that's 20 times the value per pip, that is 20, which is equal to $400 in profit. All right, so your lot size in combination with pips, with how far price has moved, is what determines how much profit or loss you are going to make. All right. Hope I'm communicating, guys. Give me some feedback again in the chat box. Kindly um, send, just write it in, in a comment. If you understand, please type in yes. If you don't, type in no, so that I know that um, I'm carrying you along. Okay. Let me know in the chat box if you understand this lot size concept in addition to PIPs concept. Okay, Mr. Ambrose, Mr. Godwin, Mr. David, Ms. Oriala, Kanayo, Oyin Kemi, Olakunle Femi. Give me some feedback, guys, so that we would um, we will continue. All right, so I just wait for a few, a few seconds to get our feedback. Then I go ahead. Mr. Raya said, yes, awesome. Who else understand this concept? Who else understand this concept? Um, I'm asking for feedback because I don't want to leave anybody behind. All right, so if you need clarifications, please signify before we go forward. Okay. All right, good. So I guess we all we all understand then. So let's move to the next concept. Let's move to the next concept. Okay. So let's talk about forex trading sessions real quick. Now. Remember that we said the foreign exchange market is open five days a week and 24 hours in a whole day. So within Mondays through Friday, there is no hour, there's no hour that you can trade in a foreign exchange market. So trading sessions in, in essence just breaks down the 24 hours into different time zones. And that time zones is based on when particular currencies are active, right? Or when particular currencies start operation in that particular country. 
Now we have four major trading sessions. We have the Sydney session, which is the first session, <clears throat> which is the first session. We have Tokyo, we have London, and then we have New York. Why is Sydney the first session? It is a first session because Sydney is Australia. Australia is, you know, their, their time zone is ahead of everybody. So they are the first to start business operations in any given week. So the first hour in the furniture market is the Sydney session. So that's why we call it Sydney session, right? So that is 8, 8 a.m. in Sydney. That's when business starts. So you can see I, I converted it to my own time because right now we're in Cyprus, but easily you just convert 8 a.m. Sydney to wherever you are, okay? You might be in the U.S. or the U.K. or Nigeria, okay? And usually if from you are in Nigeria, this would be 10 p.m., okay? 10, 10 p.m. So if the market opens Mondays, 8 a.m. at Sydney, in Nigeria to be Sunday by 10 p.m. ish, okay? The next session is a Tokyo session. Tokyo session is uh, the, the second session that opens, that's where you know the Japanese yen is active, right? And then you have the London session. That's when business starts in the UK, the UK and you know Switzerland, right? And then you have the New York session. That's where business starts in the United States, in the US, right? So these forex trading sessions, we are, we are using these sessions because this is where, when the eight major currency pairs, when they start business. So let's just go a bit deeper, okay? Now, for Sydney session, uh, you have the Australian dollar is active. So they start business. So the Australian dollar is going to be quite strong in the Sydney session, AUD. And then we also have the New Zealand dollar, NZD. Okay. Assuming the Naira is also a major, a major pair, there will most likely be maybe an African session or a Lagos session, but because the Naira is not, it's not a major currency pair. So that's why it's not here. So Tokyo session, Tokyo, we have the Japanese yen, JPY. London, we have the GBP, that's the pound sterling, GBP. What does we have on the London session? We have the Euro, EUR, and then you have the Swiss franc, which is a third, that's a CHF. And then under New York, what do we have under New York? So we have the North American currencies there. So you have the USD here, and then, we have the Canadian dollars. So as you can see, these are the eight major currency pairs. So there are other um, first trading sessions, but these are the major first trading sessions that, that encapsulate or encapsulates the major currency pairs, right? So based on when they are active, based on when business operation starts in that particular currency, all right? So this will give you a lot more context to understand um, Forex trading sessions, all right? So let us go to the next concept. All right, so let's talk about candlesticks anatomy, all right? So remember that we said the markets, we, we make money based on volatility. When exchange rates fluctuate, that is how you make money. And how do we know that 
that an exchange rate is going up or is going down? How do we, how are we able to visually know price movement? Okay. So there is something that we call candlesticks. So candlesticks are visual representation of fluctuations in price. Candlesticks are visual representation of fluctuations in price or volatility in price. So they let us know how price is moving at any given time, either every second or every minute or every hour. You can actually know how price is moving based on different time frames, which we'll show you shortly. Okay, so there are two major ways whereby, or the two only ways that we know that price is moving. Either price is moving up or it's moving down. When price is moving up, it's represented by a bullish candle. Okay, and then when price is moving down, you, you see a bearish candle. Now, a bullish candle is not green and then by default, a bearish candle is not red by default. So this is just my own way of, it makes a lot more sense to me if I see a bullish candle that is green and red for bearish. You can actually change the colors by yourself on the trading platform. Okay, so we'll talk about that shortly. But just know that we have a bullish candle. Bullish candle represents um, strength. So that particular currency pair has gained strength in that particular time frame. Bearish candle represents weakness. So that particular currency pair has lost, has gone down in price in that particular time frame. So let's define the different aspects of a bullish candle and a bearish candle. Now, because a bullish candle represents strength, so it um, represents an increment increase in price. So over here at this particular zone, this is the price where this candlestick opened. So we have the open price, right? Give me a second. So we have the open price. And then when price opened here, we have the closed price. So price opened here, it went up like so, and then eventually it closed. So this is a price, this is a closed price, okay? Now we have two things. We have low price and high price. What is low price? So when price opened at this point, possibly before it started going up, it first of all came all the way down like so. It came down, but it did not stay down. It started going back up, but that downward move had to be recorded. So we said that this is the lowest that price came. So low price. Remember, it's a visual representation of our price move. So visually, we know that at the point in time, price came as low as this, right? So that is low price. And then the next one is the high price. So before price closed here, if first of all, so when price was going up, it went up like so, but it did not stay up here. Okay, it, it went down and then closed here. But that upward move had to be recorded. So this is the highest that price came to in that particular time frame. All right, so we have open price, low price high price and close price, right? And then the, the body of the candle, we say that the distance between the open price and the close price, we call it the body of the candle. So this is the body of the candle. And then these um, tiny strokes here, we call them wick, okay, W-I-C-K. So this is the lower wick, and then this is the upper wick. On the flip side, for a bearish candle, because bearish means price is going down, right? So this is the open price, like so. So it's open here, 
came down and closed here. Hold on. Came down, came down and closed here, all right? And when price opened here, possibly before it started going down, it came up. It came up a bit before it started going down. So this is the highest that price came. And then it's the lowest that price got to before closing. So that's a candlestick anatomy, right? So um, the skill sets that you need to have as a forex trader is a skill set of actually interpreting candlesticks because that is how you know exactly when to buy and then when to sell. I'll show you in the, in the platform shortly, okay? So as a forex trader, what you'll be interfacing with is just these two kinds of candles, bullish candle and bearish candle. This is your, this is your work, all right? So at first, it might seem very, very abstract, but as you spend time on it, it's very, very beautiful. It will make a lot of sense to you, all right? So let us, let's move forward because of time, all right? All right, good. So let us jump Let's jump into trading platforms now. So we have we have two major trading uh, platforms uh, whereby we do analysis. We have uh, MetaTrader 5, and then we have something we we'll call TradingView, okay? MT5, and then we have something we we'll call TradingView. trading view, all right? So you can, you can choose to use the MT5 or you use trading view. So I'm gonna show you um, both, both platforms. Hold on, let me quickly load up um, the trading platform, all right? But for you to trade, remember, the first thing you need to have is an account with a Forex broker. All right, so you need to create an account with Tentry. So while I'm waiting for that to load up, I'll just give you a brief tour of how to create an account with um, Forex Broker, in our case with Tentry, right? So what do you want to do? You want to go to, you want to go to your browser, and then type in www.10.trade, right, 10.trade. So once you do that, it will take you directly to the 10 trade platform. Now I'm doing this to show you how to create a, um, an account because we are going to be, we we'll need to create a demo account and then we would need to log into our trading platforms so that by tomorrow we can start doing um, practicals together. It's very, very important that we come to tomorrow's class with, um, a, with a demo account logged into uh, our trading platform, All right? So let's wait for that to uh, load up real quick. All right, so this is, so my internet is quite slow. So this is 10 trade um, platform, right? As you can see, very, very beautiful platform. So what you can do is you can just go to the platform and then read up on a lot of things. But if you want to register an account with 10 trade, at the very top here, you will see register. So click on register. Click on register. Once you click on register, put in all your names and details, and then you click on continue. So once you create an account, immediately you get access to the dashboard, right? Like so. Give me a second. And then what you want to do is to open a demo account here. So on your account, what will you see? You see a button to open a demo account at the very top. So click on open a demo account. 
you'll be asked to select account type, right? Under this, select demo MT5, leverage, use 1 to 100, okay, as a start. Currency USD, over here, initial balance. You can use something close to what you start with if you want to fund your, your live account. So if you, if, you, if you plan to fund with, let's say 5K or 10K, use this. So use something similar to what you fund with and then click on continue. Okay, go continue. Good. And then we have created our demo account like so. So this is your login details. So these details is what you use to log in to your MT5. So please guys, you want to do this first uh, today so that by tomorrow we can go into practicals fully tomorrow. So this is your first point of action. Go to tendu.com, create your account, and then create a demo account. And then you now want to log in to your demo account, right? So, um, so this is the MT5 platform right here. Okay, let me share the MT5 platform. All right, so this is MT5 platform here. Okay, so this is how your chart looks like. So on, on an MT5 platform, you are able to check out a lot of currency pairs and how price is moving on those currency pairs. So right now we are on a currency pair called Euro USD. You can see over here, we have so many currencies that you can trade. So let's say you plan to trade USDCHF, you click on it, okay? And then you see exactly how price is moving on this, on this pens, like so, all right? But of course, you'll not be able to check this properly until you log in, until you log in to your account, all right? So, you can download the MT5 for, for laptop. You can also download MT5 on your mobile phone as well. So if you are using Android, you can go to your Play Store and search for MetaTrader 5. Okay. Search for MetaTrader 5. All right, so it is a free mobile app that you download that will help you trade, All right? So when you download MT5, the next thing you now want to do is to log in with your demo account details, these details right here. So what, what you need is your login and then this password and the server. So let me just give you a quick example about how to, how to log in, right? So you want to go to, it is very, very easy on, on your mobile phone. So side notes, for people that are using an, um, Apple, for Apple users, um, because of the war between Russia and Ukraine, now, MetaTrader is a Russian country, is a Russian company, and iPhone, Apple is a US company. So part of US sanctions is that they're not gonna be co cooperating with um, Russia. And so that's why Apple is canceling Russian companies like MetaTrader. So right now, Apple users are not able to download Meta Trader. You won't even find it on the App Store. So only Android users can use the app for now. All right. So I'll I'll recommend Apple users to download this on their laptop or simply use the Web Trader. So 
MT5 also has a web trader. So you can go to your, um, to your phone browser and then just go to metatrader.com. You will see the web trader there and then you log in with your normal details. Okay, so let's say you now want to log into, so you have your MT5 downloaded on your PC or on your mobile phone. On your mobile phone, you see the, the settings icon, you just click on login or add a new account. And then you want to add that account with your, uh, give me a second. You want to add that account with your demo details. So can you see my MT5 account or the browser? Okay, I think you can see the account now. So to log into your, MT5 account, you want to click on file. So once you once you've downloaded this PC account, so it's very easy to download this um, this application. Just go to this website, MT5. Let's do it again. So go to uh, www.meta trader.com all right you see the link to download the mt5 for pc is there so once you download it you install it and then you log in so to log in you come to file the first thing you want to click on is i think open open a new account so click on open a new account and over here you want to type in 10 trade so once, once you do that the 10 trade server is going to come up so click on 10 trade like so click on it and then next then once you do that you click on connect with an existing account do this and then you put your login id and then you put your password. So my login ID is this, my, my ID is 43163, 43163. Then you click on next, finish. So- Incoming mail. So as soon as you, you do that, you are logged in and as you can see, see my balance here this is your new demo account so i want you to have a demo account already logged in before tomorrow's class so to, tomorrow's class would we'll also talk briefly about other aspects of the mt5 how to use a platform we we'll would also do practicals tomorrow so um the goal of today is to just introduce you to this concept. So tomorrow we'll do a lot more practicals. All right, guys. So let me know if um, you have any questions. This is where we're, this is where we're going to stop today uh, in in um, today's session. So let me just also briefly go to the other trading platform. So remember, I told you that we have two platforms. We have MT5 and TradingView, right? TradingView is also another platform. So to get an account on TradingView, just go to TradingView, TradingView.com. All right. So uh, based on preference, you can choose to use MT5 or TradingView. But my recommendation is you definitely need to have MT5. So trade, trade, TradingView should be um, a secondary thing that you might want to use. Right, based on based on your convenience. So go to, to Jolibri.com and then you create an account. Just the way you have an account with Facebook or Instagram, create a free account. It is free to use TradingView. All right, and then it's free to use TradingView, and then you also have access to the same features. So you can check out different currency pairs and then how they are moving. Does that make sense, guys? Let me know if you understand what I'm saying. I like to ask for feedback because 
that will let me know if, if I'm passing across the message. Okay. Give me some yes in the chat box if, if you understand and give me some no in the chat box if you don't understand. Okay, we, we've, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Godwin. We've come to the end of tonight's session. So if you have any questions, please let me know in chat box. Or if you want me to unmute you, please signify. And then I'm going to unmute you so you can ask your question. Mr. Godwin, Mr. Kanayo, thank you for your response. Okay, any questions, guys, before we call it a night? So tomorrow is practical day. Tomorrow we are going to be also learning about risk management tomorrow. Tomorrow you will learn about what a stop loss is, what a take profit is. Tomorrow you will learn about market orders. Tomorrow you will learn about uh, instant execution. You will learn about sell stop, sell limit, buy stop, buy limit, right? Tomorrow you will learn about support and resistance how to map it out on the chart. Tomorrow you learn about uptrend and downtrend and how to also map it out on the chart. Tomorrow you also learn about trend lines, right? So it's a whole lot of value that you learn tomorrow. You don't want to miss tomorrow. Mr. Godwin, your hand is raised. Do you, do you, do you, do you want to speak? Okay. Please unmute yourself and speak. Okay, good evening, sir. Good evening. Okay. Um, sir, I actually want to ask if um, there is a, like a kind of um, community that uh, like is meant for this because I just joined through um, my friend Kevin Netflix, um status. So I don't know, how will you be notified by about tomorrow class? Okay, so we are going to reach out to you after tonight's session. Have you created your account yet on, on 10 trade? No. Okay, so so please create your account tonight. And then also somebody will also reach out to you tonight and then add you to the community. Is that right? Okay, sir. That clear, sir. Okay, so to, to, create, to create an account, so that's your first step, guys. You wanna to go to this website. So access to being a client gives you access to a lot of benefits. So go to 10.trade, www.10.trade, okay www.10.trade, okay? So Mr. Godwin, create, create your account and then look out for uh, a call from us either tonight or later by tomorrow, all right? And when you're added to the community, you'll be notified of our um, sessions. So every day of the week, we have live sessions like this to take us through different aspects of trading, right? So for example, on Mondays and Wednesday, we do live analysis together as a community. And then what do we do on Mondays and Wednesdays? We, um, we do analysis and then we spot setups to trade for the week, okay? Always an interesting session. Mondays and Wednesdays, all right? Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen, before we call tonight? So tomorrow, ensure that you are here tomorrow. Don't miss tomorrow's session. And also come tomorrow with your questions, if you have any questions, all right? So let me know um, any more questions, any more questions. I'll just wait for a few seconds and then we'll wrap up if we don't have any more questions. Any more questions. Okay. So guys, thank you so much for being a part of this bootcamp. Remember, this is just day one. Day two is tomorrow, which is Friday. Same time tomorrow, 6 p.m. Nigerian time. 
So we're also going to be here to complete this boot camp. It's a two day boot camp. All right. So ensure that you come tomorrow with your demo account so that you can participate in tomorrow's class. So my goal, the goal for tomorrow's session is as I am doing, uh, as I'm taking a trade or doing some things on my screen, as you will see, I would like you to also be doing the same thing so that you can follow as I'm doing, all right? So that way you get the best value from this. So guys, thanks so much for being a part of this session. I'll see you tomorrow. And of course, compliment of the season Christmas is on Sunday. Um, I'm sure that we've, we've started making preparations for Christmas. All right, guys, let's have a remarkable night. My name is Toby Okunoga, proudly, Powered by 10 trade this webinar, right? We'll see you in tomorrow's session, guys. Have a lovely night rest. Good night.